Hey, we're on day two of unit 10. Today we are going to take a look at vectors and motion along the curve. So, I think the best way to do this is to dive into some examples, and as we're going through examples, we'll take a look at how some of those formulas on that first page of your notes packet, um, why they work the way they do. Okay? So, example one, a particle moves in the xy plane so that at any time t the position is given by, and so they're giving us position, x of t and y of t. And we know that at any time t we can plug in that time and get the exact location of this particle wherever it is on this curve. Okay? So, part a, find the velocity vector, find the velocity vector at time one. All right, so velocity is a vector because it has those two components. It has both the x and the y component. So I know that the velocity vector, it is a vector. I like to use vector notation when I'm dealing with a vector. Um, I learned it a long, long time ago, and it's just stuck, and I cannot change that. So I'm going to continue. Whenever I'm writing a vector, you'll see me put this little vector notation on top of whatever the vector is. So in this case it's velocity. I will also use these little vector notation brackets or chevrons. I don't I'm not sure exactly what they're calling, but what they're called, but little little vector notation brackets instead of parentheses. We use those vector vector parentheses. Okay, I know that to find the velocity, I need to find the derivative of x and the derivative of y dx dt and dy dt. Okay, a word of note, this step, writing this is required. Okay, kids don't want to write that, but you have to if you want full credit. Why? Because AP requires it. So anything that AP is going to require, I'm going to get you used to doing. So go ahead and write that notation. You say what you're doing to get your next line. All right, so now x prime of t is 3t squared minus 8t. y prime of t, little power rule here, 4t cubed minus 6t squared. And the derivative of 5 is 0. So that's v, that's the velocity vector for any time t. And now I'm going to put in the time that they asked for, 1 for t. So when time is 1, we'll have the x-coordinate will be 3 minus 8. The y-coordinate will be a negative 2. So at time 1, oh goodness, what did I do wrong? That should be a plus, not a minus. Again, me with my signs here. So instead of a negative 2 there, that should be a 10. So at time 1, the velocity vector is negative 5, 10. Okay, part B, write the equation of the tangent line. Another equation of the tangent line. I know for that I need a point and a slope. And we want to find the equation of the line tangent at time 1. Okay, well point, the point at time 1 will have two coordinates, the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate. The x-coordinate will be x at 1, 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. The y-coordinate will be y at 1, 1 plus 2 plus 5, which is 8. So the point is negative 3, 8. Okay. Now for the slope. The slope is dy dx. The slope is always dy dx. So that will also apply when we're in polar's next unit. When we have thetas, instead of t's, we'll have thetas. Uh, not, not the next unit, but later on in this unit. So dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. And in particular, we're looking for this at time equals 1, so I might go ahead and put in that notation. We're going to find dy dx when time is 1. So dy dt is the derivative of y up here, which we just found, it's sitting right there for us, 
So it's 4t cubed plus 6t squared. And, um, oh goodness, me and my notation, that was terrible. dy dt and dx dt. I hope, hopefully I said dy dx. Um, hopefully I said dy dt and dx dx dt. I think I said it wrong again. Okay, let me try that again. dy dx is dy dt divided by dx dt. All righty. I think I got it that time. Okay, our numerator is dy dt, the derivative of y with respect to t, which we found up here. dx dt is the derivative of x with respect, with respect to t, which we found right there. And now we are going to plug in 1 for time. So we're going to have 10 over that negative 5 which is negative 2. So our slope when time is 1 is negative 2. The equation of the line tangent will be y minus the y value is the slope times x minus the x value. Alrighty. I need to slow down a little bit. <laughs> okay. Part C. Find the acceleration vector. Find the acceleration vector when time is 1? Well, the acceleration vector at any time t, is, it is a vector, so I'm going to use vector notation. It will be the second derivative of x as its x component and the second derivative of y as its y component. So once again, you must write that if you want full credit. Okay. So now the second derivative of x, I'm going to be up. I'm going to take the derivative of the first derivative of x. So that will be 6t minus 8. The second derivative of y is the derivative of the first derivative of y. So 12t plus sorry, 12t squared plus 12t. And lastly, we just need to plug in the time that they asked for, time 1. And that will be a negative 2, 24. So the acceleration vector at time 1 is negative 2, 24. Okay? So not a bad little problem. I need to make sure my notation is correct and I'm saying it correctly. All right. Example 2. Particle moves in the xy plane so that at any time t the position is given by, so once again they're giving us position. They say that time is greater than 0, greater than or equal to 0, and it just asks for what values of t, so we're looking for time, is the particle at rest. So let's think back to unit 4. Unit 4, I still have my, what I, I think I still have it. Oh, I already put it away. Okay, in Unit 4, the particle was at rest. Particle is at rest when the velocity is 0, right? When the velocity is 0, the particle is at rest. So, here we are in parametric, we're on a curve. So we want the curve version, the parametric version of the velocity being zero. Okay? Velocity is a vector. So for the velocity to be zero, it doesn't make, really make sense. We want for each component of velocity vector to be zero. So in other words, we want both x prime and y prime to be zero. So I'm going to write that down. The particle is at rest. when the velocity vector is zero. Zero, zero. Both components have to be zero for this particle to be at rest. Otherwise, if only one was zero, then the particle can still be moving in the other direction. It can still be moving up or down if the right and left component is zero. Okay. 
So I need to say what I'm doing. I know that the velocity vector is the vector with the um, whose x component is x prime and whose y component is y prime. You could also write this as dx dt and dy dt. That's fine too. Nothing wrong with that. So x prime at t is, so x prime at t is 6t squared minus 30t plus 36. We want for that to be 0. So I'm going to do a little algebra here. I see there's a 6 in everything. Time to factor. T and T, 3 and 2, minus and minus. We'll get that negative 5 and the positive 6. So T is 2 and 3. So at time 2 and 3, the X component of the velocity vector is 0. Only the X is 0. Now we're going to find when the Y component is 0. So y prime of t is 3t squared minus 6t plus 0. Set that equal to 0. There's a 3 in common. Oh, there's t in common too. Let me write that again. There's a 3t in common. Okay, so t is either 0 or 2. So at time 0 and 2, the y component of the velocity vector is 0 right? So we need for both the x and the y component to be 0. So at what time does that happen? Well, that only happens when the time is 2. So the particle is at rest only at time 2. I can see that being a multiple choice question where one of the choices is 0, 2, and 3. Hopefully you won't get fooled by that answer choice. Okay? Alrighty. Um, example 3, next page of your notes. Okay. Particle moves in the xy plane so that when time t for any time t, t greater than or equal to 0, the position of the part, another time they're given us position again, Sometimes they give us position, sometimes they give us velocity, or x prime and y prime. Sometimes they give us a combination of those. All right, part A. Find the magnitude of the displacement of the particle from time 1 to time 3. All right. Remember back in unit 4. In unit 4, Displacement was our ending position minus our initial position, right? We want our ending position minus our initial position. Well, we're not in just horizontal motion. We have horizontal and vertical motion going on on the same, the same um, particle. So instead of being right to left and up and down, we're looking something like that. We're starting here and we're ending here. We want that the magnitude of the displacement, so we want this length. Magnitude, magnitude by the way, is another word for absolute value. So we want the absolute value of the displacement. Okay, we want the magnitude of that displacement, the absolute value of it. Okay, so in general, we're looking for something like that, that length, that magnitude. Okay, This is going to have both an x and a y component, where this is delta x and this is delta y. So this length, little Pythagorean theorem, this will be delta x squared plus delta y squared under that square root, little Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude of displacement is going to be the square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. That is something that you need to know. Either know how to get it quickly or just know the formula for it, but know it.
Alrighty. So for us, from 3 to 1, I'm going to have I need x of 3 minus x of 1. And then I'm going to square that. And then y of 3 minus y of 1. And then I'm going to square that. Of course, it doesn't matter if you do time 3 or time 1 first because we're squaring these quantities, right? So let's see. I need to do a little, um, little just adding and subtracting and stuff. So at time 3, I might come off to the side and do that. At time 3, we're going to have 9 plus 9, so that's 18. At time 1, we're going to have 1 plus 3, and so that's 4. So that will be um, x of 3 minus x of 1 will be 14 squared. Okay, y of 3 will be y cubed minus 3y squared, that's just 0. y of 1 is 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So this is going to be the change squared. This will be 0 minus a negative 2. So the change is 2 squared. And that would be a safe stop spot right there. Okay. If it's multiple choice, there's a chance that they would simplify that and simplify. That comes out to 10 square root of 2. I'm not going to go through all that, but that's what that would be. Okay. All right, part B. Find the magnitude of the velocity vector. Well, the magnitude, magnitude is absolute value. So the magnitude of velocity vector looks like that. Again, we want at, at well, this time we just wanted at time 1. Okay? So again, think of a vector. Think of a vector. We want its magnitude. We want its length. Length, magnitude, absolute value, they all mean the same thing. Okay? So this time it's the velocity vector. Okay? What are e what's each component of velocity? Well, each component of velocity is x prime and y prime, right? So, in, so this length will be, instead of delta x squared, it's going to be x prime squared plus y prime squared under that square root. So the magnitude of velocity This should have been a little vector there. The magnitude of the velocity is the square root of x prime squared plus y prime squared. Look at the difference between the two, our two results here. Okay. So this is the magnitude of the velocity vector. Um, so let's see. I'm going to come off to the side here. x prime of t is taking the derivative of this guy, so 2t plus 3. Um, so x prime of 1 will be 2 plus 3, 5. y prime of t is 3t squared minus 6t. And y prime of 1 is going to be 3 minus 6, or negative 3. Okay, so I can say that the velocity, the magnitude of the velocity at time 1 is the square root of 5 squared plus negative 3 squared, and that's another safe stop spot, or square root of 34. 25 plus 9. Okay? So, um, a word of note. Do you recognize absolute value of velocity? What is absolute value of velocity? This is speed. We just found speed. So that is not only the formula for the magnitude of the velocity, but it's also the formula of speed because they are identical. 
and we need to know that. This is a big one for us, okay? All right. Um, trying to think, do I want to go through how to get the distance formula? Um, the distance that a particle travels. And you know what? I know that in the classroom I would do that. So I think I am going to show you where this next formula comes from. So I'm going to do a little sidetrack. I'm going to get a little sidetrack. We are at 20 minutes. I think we're okay. Um, so I don't think it will take just too long. So let's. I'm going to show you where the formula for the distance a particle travels comes from. Okay. So we found back mm, several units ago, back in our, it was at the end of our volume unit, which was unit seven, the, the formula for the length of a curve. The length of a curve from x is equal to a to x is equal to b, the length of that curve is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared dx. That is the length of a curve, right? Well, now we're in parametrics. So y is a function of t, x is a function of t. So if we're finding the length of a curve, which would be the total distance traveled by the particle, right, would be the length of the curve, we're going to have 1 plus dy dt over dx dt squared dx because, so that's a big complex fraction there, um, because dy, dy dt over dx dt is dy dx, right? Okay, inside the square root, I'm going to get a common denominator. Inside the square root, I'm going to get a common denominator. So I'm going to, the common denominator is going to be dx dt squared, okay? So 1 will be dx dt squared over dx dt squared. That gets us our 1 there, right? And this will be dy dt squared. That's still all under the square root. We still have the dx there, okay? So we got a common denominator, right? Okay. All right. Um, now I have now I have the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. But what is the square root of the bottom? Well, the square root of dx dt squared is just dx dt. Okay. All right. We're almost there. Okay. I'm going instead of dividing by dx dt. Instead of dividing by dx dt, I'm going to multiply by dt dx, right? Because that's what we do when we're dividing a fraction. The dx's cancel, and we're left with, oops, dx dt squared plus dy dt squared dt which we wanted. We wanted dt because we're going to have t's all over the place in here. I left this integral blank because these were x-coordinates, correct? These were x-coordinates. So we are going to need the x, the x-coordinates, we're going to need the, we're going to need time coordinates here. So these will be time a to time b, whatever will be given those. We will be given those. But this is our equation for the length of a curve. It's the total distance traveled um, Okay, 
So notice that, notice the inside of this. The inside of that, does that look familiar to you? The square root of the first derivative squared plus the second, sorry, dx dt squared, which is x prime of t squared plus y prime of t squared. We just had that right here for the speed. So another way to write this would be it's the integral from time A to time B of speed. Okay. Another way to write that would be the integral of the magnitude of the velocity vector because speed is the magnitude of the velocity vector. So we are going to remember that. Okay, hopefully that didn't take me too long, about five minutes. Okay, let's go back to our notes page. Part C, write but don't evaluate an expression which gives the distance the particle has traveled from time one to time three. Okay, so the distance the particle traveled is the integral from time one to time three, they're going to give us those every time, square root of the first, the derivative of x squared plus the derivative of y squared. That's the, that is speed, right? If you prefer to write that as dx dt, do it. dy dt, do it. It's fine. All right. So x prime of t is 2t plus 3. We found that in part b. y prime of t is 3t squared minus 6t, all squared. We don't forget our dt, okay? So that is, um, that is all we have to do because that said write but don't evaluate. So we're done with that. Okay, number four, last example for the day. A particle moves in the xy plane so that such that its velocity vector is this. So they're giving us x prime and y prime at t. If the position vector, position vector at time zero is seven negative four, find the position of the particle at time one. Well, they're giving us, they gave us that x prime of t is 3t squared mi minus, goodness, minus 4t. And they gave us that y prime of t was 8t cubed plus 5. Okay, I need to tell them that. If this is an FRQ, I have to say that. They gave me that this was the velocity vector. I have to state that that means x prime is that x coordinate and y prime is that y coordinate, okay? They also gave me that x at, t at zero is seven and y at zero is negative four. And we wanna find the position at time one so we want x at 1 and y at 1. So we're going to set up two fundamental theorems. So x at 1 minus x at 0 is the integral from 0 to 1 of x prime. And y at 1 minus y at 0 is the integral 0 to 1 of y prime. I've looked at enough AP exams to be able to tell you that you almost always get a point for setting up the fundamental theorem, okay? So just what I did just now should get me a point. All right, which means if you don't set it up, you're gonna lose a point. So make sure you set it up. Okay, x of zero is seven, and x prime is three t squared minus four t Write our dt here. 
All right, antiderivative. Um, this will be the, the coefficient's just going to be a 1. Raise your power by 1. This is going to be a 2t squared. We're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. That was nice of me to give you a 0 and 1 here. So in time 1, we're going to have 1 minus 2, which is a negative 1. So x at 1 is going to be 6. Same thing for our y's. y at 0 was given to us to be a negative 4. y prime is 8t cubed plus 5. Okay. So antiderivative, um, we're going to have a 2t to the 4th plus 5t, little power rule there. So at time 1, or when we put 1 in, we're going to have a 7. When we put 0 in, we just get 0. So y of 1 is 3. And so at time 1, the position is, okay. Should I give it, should I state it um, using parentheses or vectors? Um, and I go to what they gave me. They gave me the position is, it looks like this. So I'm going to return the favor and give them the same notation back. Okay, on AP and on my test, you would get credit for either way that you state that, either in, either with these vector chevrons or parentheses. Either one is fine. Alrighty. Okay. Um, I think that's it. So tomorrow we will do this kind of work, but we will have a calculator to help us. So we'll be able to get a little bit more, um, we will have more interesting functions because our calculator is going to do a lot of the work for us.